Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Last Stand Gamers, and welcome back to the production facility. So today, we're going to be taking a little bit of a look at this subsection building. This is, of course, where my torpedoes are stored, different designs, old and new. A little bit of a museum to some of the relic old designs that we first came up with when the game came out. So let's go and take a look inside. So let's open this bad boy up through the airlock, seal the airlock behind me. And then we enter through here. So this is the torpedo workshop. This is the place where the workers come to collect some of the ideas when they become into production. So when they come into production, the worker comes down, copies the blueprints and continues. So red ones that are basically torpedoes that are no longer in production. And yellow ones are viable torpedoes for the current stage of the game. So we've got the hollow point torpedo. Well, basically a torpedo that's one big thick slug so it's not really a hollow point then we move on to the sort of hollow point designs here where we've got a hollow point with like an explosive tip and then these torpedoes just became obsolete very fast with the armor changes then we moved over to this one this is pretty similar to the one on the stealth fighter that you saw a few videos ago without the gyro stabilization and it's a very nice torpedo but it doesn't stabilize very well without them gyroscopes now this torpedo here has a lot of things to talk about it is a drilling torpedo and you've got this sort of thruster stabilization because when the drills active this thing goes all over the place the concept is a beautiful is a beautiful idea and loads of people have been talking about it in previous comments but it just doesn't work as well as you may think I'll probably do a little bit of a clip just showing you what actually happens when you use this thing in most circumstances moving on we have the armor tipped with the double penetration so the idea is this will hit the side of the ship and then it will flex the torpedo to slam into the side then we have the gyro stabilized torpedoes we've got the version you saw the other day in the stealth fighter and here we have the same version with a double spike tip but basically these ideas are just get these with safety caps and we get rid of them moving on we have another out of production torpedo this one is the idea of whacking it into the side of a ship it gets stuck in and then the beacon here relays it to whoever's tracking that ship so like a Bismarck situation just imagine you've got this big enemy ship that's really hard to take down you fire one of these bad boys at it, it manages to get stuck inside the, the guys are trying to get rid of it but just long enough for the rest of your fleet to track onto it and locate its position so moving on we have the soft core torpedo so the concept of this I'll just whack this in is that you've got these big strong heavy armor blocks around the outside that don't compact and then this compacts in breaking this area that then detonates the charge causing all this to rip open in shrapnel then moving on we have the worm torpedoes that I like to say and the concept of these is the warhead actually hits the side then these swing into it and cause double damage and make a larger damaged area then we move on to the double penetration sort of torpedoes once again. Now these use a double sort of heavy armor tip and the idea is just to get them lodged in because they can create more damage when the ship tries to move if they are lodged rather than if they just make a clean penetration right through it. So moving on we have another rotor ended tip torpedo with sort of thruster stabilization just to keep it on a straight flight path. And finally we have this is my latest concept, like, like, latest idea you could say in making torpedoes work and the concept was stolen from my grappling hook sort of video where you hit this part and uh, this breaks off and then this rams into the side and you do a massive amount of damage with a very simple torpedo but it's very easy to be shot down unlike some of the thicker designed so let's head back outside through our airlock seal this on up I'm going to show you a few clips of me firing a variety of these torpedoes I'm not going to show them all but I'm going to show you some that you might find rather interesting. So we have our stealth fighters here set up with a very basic solid sort of slug torpedo. And I'm going to show you why this old design is still very effective. So I've got two armoured plates set up there. And I'm going to get in here before I show you first. So there's two armoured plates off in the distance. We're going to reach the magical speed of 50 meters per second. And then we're going to release these guys. Remember there's no gyro stabilisation. So it relies a lot on the pilot's actual aim and practice. So we're going to get ourselves up to that speed and then we'll release. You can see the weight of this torpedo is also offers quite a bit of a problem because it wants to pull the ship down. So I'm getting ready on release when we get to the magic number. There's the magic number. And we release it. Now watch the damage that this torpedo can do even though it's not even got a warhead in it. 
The penetration value still is very high, very nice. So you can see there. What we'll do is we'll go and grab the other missile and we'll come on back. Right, so we're going to go for the heavy armor now. The heavy armor is just to the left and we'll see what sort of penetration value we actually get on that with this solid sort of slug torpedo. We might get it good, might be quite bad. I do not know. I've not tested these old designs on sort of a new armor. We're nearly up at the speed and we release. And there it goes, shooting ahead. Let's actually see what damage it does. That's pretty surprising there, because it also almost looks like it's done more damage against the actual heavy armor than the light armor. But maybe that's due down to the angle that I actually hit, because you can see how that's compacted, and it didn't just fall apart like the other one. So I would say that was probably just a variation in what could happen when it impacts. Right, just to rule out any possibilities of these torpedoes being absolutely useless, and you guys saying that you're only shooting at one layer of armor, I'm going to fire at two le levels of heavy armor now, so we'll actually see how well this actually works. So we'll get ourselves up to speed. The torpedo is exactly the same as the previous design, but will we have the same sort of impact on two layers, or will we simply just bounce off? That's always the question that I'm going to be faced with when designing these sort of things. So we've reached the speed. There it goes. Will it pen? Two layers of armor. Stops it dead stops it absolutely dead that absolutely uh, it still tried to pen that first layer but since the second layer is there to enforce it got no chance right so that moves us on to our more slim slim line you could say stealth model of torpedo so the idea of this is it impacts and then it will bend representatively as you could say so we're reaching 50 miles per hour or fps and here we go right so it's not very stable but will we get that impact we want no, it just bounced straight off. That is not what we want. We need some way of getting the actual warhead to detonate from inside. But how would they do that? That's a good question. We'll have to continue looking through our torpedoes, Arsenal. Right, so next up we actually have the drill torpedo. A torpedo that sounds like it could work really well, but in concept I'm not sure if it'll work as well as we think. So if we get ourselves into the cockpit, by pressing T and then we activate our gear by pressing G and dragging our tool down. It's pretty simple, I believe. Come on. There we go. Right, now we press 1 to activate that. Well, we should be able to just turn it on and off, to be honest. On. There we go. Right, torpedo drill is on. Okay, so you can see how it shakes the ship and it needs them to actually stabilize it. But what I'm going to try to do today is take this in at a bit of a slower speed to see if we can actually get that drilling we want. So let's speed this thing up. You can see it under there. It does look pretty cool, I guess. It looks scary. But it does shake the ship all over the place when you're trying to get this thing towards the target. And most likely it'll break off before you even get there in most cases. So I'm approaching that speed that we need to reach. And the speed is nearly here. Right now it is there. We're just going to... See, see, this is the exact problem just made me pull instantly up right so we don't have to work on this we'll try doing it at a slow speed just nice and steady might just be able to get us to penetrate the armor of this thing so there it is see it just it doesn't work as well as you really want it to work as you can see I'm just gonna follow this thing because it might just do a loop and come back and hit our own ship This, this, is, this is like its own sort of homing device, you could say. It looks, to me, like it's coming back for that target. But no, it's just going to do another loop. Well, that is why that torpedo is no longer in production. Right, so I've moved on to the beacon warhead. The actual beacon is inside the missile, and the idea of it is to get stuck inside the target. And I'm going to try getting up to a little bit of higher speed before release. So I'm going to probably go for 60, maybe 70 feet per second, or meters a second, rather. And we will try. So we're going to surpass 50, and then we'll get to 60, most likely, before we actually impact the target ourselves. So 60 coming up, and now release. All right, there goes the beacon. Now hopefully, if everything goes well, and it didn't go well, but the armoured penetration penetrated two layers of armour. So that is the important factor of this. 
but the beacon didn't actually lodge itself in, so these torpedoes are not as effective as we would like to hope. Right, so we're going to try out this design on the heavy armour to the left, and to be honest, I think it's quite promising the results. We just need to get its impact straight, so maybe if we adjust it with a bit of gyro stabilisation as well, we'll get a better flight path for actually this missile itself. So, let's continue on. We'll get the magic speed of about 60 metres a second, and then we'll release this guy off on his own to destroy the target. So, there it is, 60, and release... And now, please impact correctly. Beautiful. Beautiful. Now, that is the exact result we were looking for on the first target. You see how we've got this very neat sort of crack penetration. So, it's almost like... It's, you see how it's just got that very narrow sort of slit through. And it's created this impact that is perfect for a follow-up torpedo shot. So, it's penetrated one layer of armour by the looks of it. Let's just cut this back. And see, so no, it's actually penetrated two layers of heavy armor, damaging the second, but actually fully penetrating the first by the looks of it. So yeah, that is pretty naughty weapon, you could say, but I'm not too sure about it. Right, so I hope you really enjoyed watching them different torpedoes and the mishaps you can have, and sometimes they just don't work at all. And this is not a giant torpedo, this is a large ship that I built for survival sort of transport or maybe just even a sort of, a, not a frigate, but a transport vessel. So this is just a simple transport vessel, we've got crates up at the front, exposed of course, but at the same time easily accessed for a mine and you can bring this up to a mining station maybe and you could just get your stuff in and out. And you've got this just nice simple cone shape. The, the circular shape of it was to make the hull as hard as possible for someone to stick to and um, actually breach into it. We've got a, quite a strong engine sort of power pack at the back. And I've put these little bit spikes on here just to give that added little bit of armor. Even though it's not a combat vessel, I do believe even the most vulnerable ships will come under attack from just, you know, random guys buzzing around in their troll crafts or whatever you want to call them. So... That is pretty much it. I'll take you inside and just show you what we've got here. So, uh, the, the thing I like to do, I know this is stupid, but I like to build sometimes flaws into some of the things I build. So, in this instance, we actually have um, the engine up at the front, in front of the supply containers, you can see there. And this actual part is actually a narrow walkway exposed to the elements or people out there, or whoever's out there, when they're trying to ra raid your supplies, you could say. Now, this bit's pretty interesting. The concept of this is a rotary door system that will lock in place, just like, you know, like a safe sort of lock. So when it rotates down, it's locked in position. And now this is technically locked, but I haven't actually tested the construction of this. And then when you rotate it this way, what should happen is the actual hole should line up, and then you get an entrance and exit. So we move into the hangar sort of cargo bay area. Nothing too fancy. But here is where I'm going to construct some sort of winch construction like you saw on the grappling hook ship. But the concept for this one will either be a drill or something else. I'm thinking about putting like a massive drill blade and then lower it down into here. Or something a bit different like a crane arm. So basically I can bring up supplies into this area. And then some other way like maybe a conveyor belt going through into loading. But it's all concepts. And another question that I thought I'd answer is... You guys seem to be asking, where do, you, where do you get these ideas from for ships, for different things? Well, for ships, I don't know. I tend to look at, like, military things, like, um, you know, like like that Russian hovercraft thing that landed on that beach a while ago. I thought that was, that was pretty interesting. Took some ideas and some of the shapes for some of my ships from that. And then also, for more of the mechanical stuff, like the factory, it's really simple. I mean, you, you just look at a factory in real life and then realize what sort of problems you'd have in space, like... Just think of all the items floating all over the place. How would you have to generate that gravity generator? But then at the same time, you want the gravity not to be on because you want to transfer items just by... Think about it. You don't need... A, everything's weightless. You can move an item without any effort. I mean, you don't need a massive crane. You don't need all this. But who knows? There's a lot to come. I also asked yesterday about... Well, not yesterday. It was a few days ago now. About AI. And from what I have gathered, it doesn't seem like AI is going to be a big part of Space Engineers, even though they look into it. I mean, something like a rogue faction, like a, sort of like a red, red colour, or maybe even an alien sort of species that look all alien-ly, and just something that players can, you know... <laughs>